I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Good morning, Greater Bethel. You all have absolutely no idea how good it is for us to be here. Praise the Lord. The Reverend Bob Evans talked about, do you all remember a time when we didn't have no music? And I turned to my pastor and said, I'm in that time right now. Hallelujah. But to be here at Greater Bethel, where you see more than four or five people, and they're singing and there's worshiping, Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. To this pastor, the best pastor on this side of the world, to my pastor. The Reverend Morris Red and Julia, thank you so much for, for this opportunity. To, to my sister, Amen. the Reverend Brenda Prince. I, I was thinking as the pastor was up here, I was thinking, Pastor, if you're, if you're ever low and you're down and, and you need some encouragement, you need to eavesdrop on Reverend Prince's and my conversation because we, we, we sing your name to high praises. For all that you poured into us. For all that you did for us. So I do thank God for you. To the baddest first lady. In the whole wide world. And, and, and I got to be careful, y'all. Let, let me say, excluding the Western District. That is. The Reverend Gloria Redden. God bless you in this name. And to my queen. Amen. First Lady of Mount Bethel Mitchell Chapel in the North, North Carolina. God bless you. Let me, let me, I'm, I'm going to get out of y'all way real quick. Because I'm, I'm excited about not only preaching the word, but being able to receive a word this morning. Amen. Let me call your attention to the gospel of the Apostle John. You probably don't even have to read this one, but I'm going to let you turn anyway. That third chapter and the 16th and the 17th verses. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for this another opportunity to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for days gone by. And because this is the last day of 2017, God, we're going to thank you for years gone by. We're asking now in the name of Jesus that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Because I declare that you are my rock and you are my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name that we always pray. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. The Gospel of John, third chapter. This is the New Living Trans Translation. And it reads, For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. I want to focus on that 16th verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Having just celebrated Thanksgiving and being blessed of God to once again go through my queen's favorite season, the Advent season, and to be present in another Christmas season. It's hard not to think about the fact that we have arrived at the end of another year. 
and I, and I noticed that my reflection in thought is deepening as it usually does. This time of year, I seem to ponder things more carefully and walk ever so intentional in the way of humility and appreciation. It's almost as though my, my senses are heightened to better receive the realness of my humanity and walk ever so intentional and but simultaneously they're able to be thankful and find a tune to the truth that this place called earth is not my home. If I subscribed to temptation philosophy, I would believe like Papa who was a rolling stone. Wherever I laid my hat, that would be my home. If I held dear to century old philosophy, home is where the heart is. And then wherever my family was, would be home to me. Even if I dared to be persuaded by Stephanie Mills' powerful testimony about home, I couldn't like her long to be back there because I declare that I know that I've never been there before. How I could agree with Stephanie in that home is a place where love is overflowing. And, and there it is, love. Somebody say love. Thanksgiving was just the other month and the things that we do at Thanksgiving say to me that we love it. We, we love it. We love family. And as much as family is a blessing, Thanksgiving isn't actually about your family. Thanksgiving. When friends come far and near to make sure that they're able to celebrate with one another. And as beautiful as that is, Thanksgiving is not really about friendship. Food. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Yeah, favorite dishes and desserts are carefully and plentifully prepared. Diets are abandoned and health issues are placed up on the shelf. Portions and servings are out of control. And in many settings, the fire water flows freely with secretly sanctioned liberty. Speaking of fire water, the Wampanoag Indians and the Plymouth colonists started this thing when they broke bread together but thanksgiving is not honestly about food and fellowship somebody say love, love. whenever you pause long enough to quiet the confusion to say no to the nonsense to to hide yourself from the hustle and be blind to the bustle and you are able to peel away all the superficial habits and routines and you're able to freely zero in on what's all the way right and what's all the way relevant and what's all the way real then and only then you'll be able to get a good glimpse of what thanksgiving is all about and it's reasonable to believe that, that you could pull out an American history book or go Google crazy and refute everything that I've just said. But what I'm about to say would put that nonsense in check. At some point and place and time in your life, hopefully you will become intimately familiar with the invisible and almighty God. And if such a blessing for you is past tense, then you should be able to somewhat wrap your mind around the fact that the Thanksgiving that I've been referring to is not altogether about a holiday. But if that blessing for you is in the future, then I'm going to go ahead and include you and proclaim that Thanksgiving is about love and being thankful. And at the very top of the list of things that we could and should be thankful for is the very best gift that has ever been given and that will ever be given. <laughs> And so just for a little while, I want to talk to us from the topic right on love. Hallelujah. There was a man. 
by the name of Barry Eugene Carter. You knew him as Barry White. He sang songs like, I'm going to love you and forever love and can't get enough of your love, babe. He discovered the female group Love Unlimited. And he had this bad 40-piece string-laden orchestra called Love Unlimited Orchestra. And they had this killer hit that was a hit for quite a while, y'all, and it was called Love Thing. Somebody say love. Yeah. And, and in his one-of-a-kind bass baritone voice, he would smoothly drop on you his two signature words, and they were right on. <laughs> and as bad as he was, it is fitting for me to drop on you myself maybe not as smooth as as Barry Height but I Barry White but I got to let you know this morning that God is love and so when he loves you he his love is showing love and since he is love he loves with a love that does what no other love can do and if you're okay with me breaking it down for you in your very very best very white voice can you say right on first of all god's love keeps right on loving in one of in one of Luther Vandross's recordings, he can be heard declaring, "If this world were mine, I'd place at your feet all that I own. You've been so good to me. If this world were mine, I'd give you the flowers, the birds, and the bees. And with your love beside me." It would be all I need. If this world were mine, I'd give you anything. I remember that love song professed to so many people, and it made hearts melt. And the reason that the hearts were melting is because of the make-believe notion of a loved one's love that if the world were theirs, they would give anything. Well, with thanksgiving in my heart and dancing in my feet, I'm thrilled to say that I'm so glad that I know with absolute certainty that this world belongs to God. How can you be so sure, preacher? Well, the Bible opens with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, a formless mass, cloaked in darkness. And the Spirit of God was hovering over its surface. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that it was good. Then he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night together. These made up one day. And God called the space sky. This happened on the second day. The land was filled with seed-bearing plants and trees. And their seeds produced plants and trees of like kind. This all happened on the third day. God set these lights in the heavens to light the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from darkness. This all happened on the fourth day. So God created great sea creatures and every sort of fish and every kind of bird. And this all happened on the fifth day. Then God said, let us make people in our image to be like ourselves. They will be masters of all life, the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and all the livestock, wild animals and small animals. So God created people in his own image. God patterned them after himself, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and he told them multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, be masters over the fish and all the birds and the animals. And so it was. Then God looked over all he made and he saw that it was excellent in every way. 
this all happened on the sixth day. And I told you that to let you know that God doesn't have to say if this world were mine. This world is God's. And he made it all by himself. And not only is this world his, but he gave it to us. And not only did he do that, he made us large and in charge. He, he made us masters over everything. Say everything. And though it pains me to say it, you know what happened next. We were not good stewards over all God lovingly blessed us with we we messed it up we fell way short and if you're thinking nah that was adam and eve let me go ahead and set the record straight you did too mess it up you do too mess it up because in the face of all that god has done for us in 2017 and in all that god does for us right in his face we sometimes walk contrary to his will. Lord, have mercy. But the excellent news that I got to share with you on this last day of 2017 is in the midst of our mess and our mishaps. While we are being selfish and self-centered, even in the middle of us being disobedient and disrespectful, God's love keeps right on loving can you say amen? And this is how love do what he do. In spite of me doing me and in spite of you doing you, his love keeps right on loving. Can you say right on? Well, not only does God's love keeps right on loving, God's love keeps right on giving. A man named Keith was walking along a steep cliff one day when he accidentally got too close to the edge and old Keith fell off. On his way down, he grabbed a branch which temporarily stopped his fall. He looked down and to his horror, he saw that the cliff fell down over 1,000 feet. He couldn't hang on to the branch forever and there was no way for him to climb back up the steep cliff. So he began yelling for help, hoping that somebody passing by would hear him and lower a rope or something. Help! He cried over and over. Somebody help me, please. But nobody heard him and nobody came. And just when he was about to give up, he heard a voice say, Keith, Keith, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I'm down here. I can see you, Keith. Are, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. But who are you and where are you? I'm the Lord, Keith. I'm everywhere. The Lord, you mean God? That's me, God said. God, please help me. I promise if you get me down from here, I'll stop sinning. I'll be a good person. I'll serve you for the rest of my life. I promise I will, God. God says, easy on the promises, Keith. Let me get you down first, and then we'll talk. Now, here's what I want you to do. Listen carefully to me, Keith. I'll do anything, Lord. Just, just tell me what you want me to do. <laughs> okay. Let go of the branch. What? <laughs> I said, let go of the branch. Just trust me and let it go. There was a long period of sinus. Finally, Keith held, you yeah, help, help. Is anybody else up there? <laughs> and I told you that to let you know that sometimes you're so busy doing you. And sometimes I'm so busy doing me <laughs> that we really don't give God all that he deserves. <laughs> we don't pay righteous and respectful attention to the Lord or call on the Lord until we're in trouble. <laughs> 
And even with that, the love of our gracious God keeps right on giving. <laughs> we give God our afterthoughts. God gives us afternoons. <laughs> we give God what's at the bottom. <laughs> God gives us his best. <laughs> we give God our contrariness. God gives us his covenants. <laughs> we give God dissension. God gives us direction. We have the nerve to give God excuses. God gives us experiences. We give God our fornication. God gives us forgiveness. We give God our gossip. God gives us his gospel. We give God hype. He gives us hope. We give God our iniquity. He gives us his invitation. We give God our junk. He gives us his joy. We give God our kinkiness. And God in return gives us his kindness. And we give God our laziness. And God gives us his love. The truth of the matter is, and all that we should give God and we don't, and all that we don't give God that we should, God still keeps right on giving. Hallelujah, somebody. And because sometimes we gave and we give God our willful disobedience, I need to let you know that we were on our way straight to hell. Our necks were on the chopping block. We were standing awaiting our sentencing because the word of God is clear that the wages of sin is death. But God, somebody say, but God. But God so loved the world and that he gave, hallelujah, somebody. His love keeps right on giving. He sent his son to take your place and he sent his son to take my place and despite all of what you should have gotten god gave you jesus hallelujah somebody god's love keeps right on loving god's love keeps right on giving and finally and i'm gonna take my seat god's love keeps right on saving <laughs> There are various and varied affirmations concerning what one can achieve. They are positive and they are motivational. And in the vast number, there are those that stake their claim partially or some of them wholly based on what one believes. And here are a few. Muhammad Ali said, if, a, if my mind can conceive it, and my heart can believe it, uh, then I can achieve it. And Theodore Roosevelt says, believe you can, and you are halfway there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he said. Mary Kay Ash said, uh, don't limit yourself. Many people limit themselves to what they think they can do. Uh, you can go as far as your mind lets you. What you believe, remember, you can achieve. And those three giants in their own rights are somewhat on point. But I stopped by here on this last day of 2017 because the Lord would have you to be all the way on point. So let me drop this on you. The real deal concerning believing and achieving is for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is the only begotten son of God, not because you heard it over and over, not because your family members believe it, but you've got to wholeheartedly believe it and believe that he was, believe that he is, and believe that he ever shall be. You've got to really believe that as this year rolls by, you've got to believe in him. Then the Bible says that you should not. You will not 
you shall not perish, but you will have eternal life. Can you say amen? amen. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God's love can save you just that way. And get this, God's love keeps right on saving. I'm getting ready to sit down, but I, but I have to let some hymn writers testify before I take my seat. Isaac Watts would like for you to know that alas, and did my savior bleed. And did my sovereign lie? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day brother charles wesley come on and say a word about the right on love of god father i stretch my hands to thee no other help i know if thou withdraw thyself from me oh whether shall i go and this is what i like i do believe I now believe that Jesus died for me and through his blood, his precious blood, I shall from sin be free. God's love keeps right on loving. God's love keeps right on giving and God's love keeps right on saving. Can you say right on? Say it again. Say it one more time. May the precious love of the almighty God keep right on for you in 2018.